Hello everybody, I'm Mr. Wally of the Jackson County Library Services. How are you doing today? I'm here to tell you a story this afternoon. This is one that you've heard of before, but boy, I have a twist in this tale for you. This is the story of Jack and the Beanstalk, and this is how the story goes. Once upon a time there was, and twice upon a time there wasn't, a young lad by the name of Jack who lived with his mother in a humble little cottage way outside the village, way deep in the country. It was a small farm that they, that they took care of. And being that there was only two of them, they could only do so much work on this land. And they only had one cow. They didn't have a plow horse or an ox or anything else to help them. So it was pretty pretty humble existence that they had. Barely had two pennies to rub together, those two. Finally, one day, the cow just stopped giving milk. And they knew that they had to take it in to get something out of it. Otherwise, oh my goodness, they would be close to starving. So his mother, yeah, his mother told Jack, Now, I want you to take Betsy into the village, to the market, and get the most that you can out of it. No dawdling. No goofing around, no skylarking. I, I, I know this, I'm really entrusting you to this, but you're a young man now. People will look at you and, you know, there'll be some that'll want to take you for a ride. There'll be others who will see you and say, there you are, representing your mother. You're, and, and they'll treat you right. Look for those people, the ones who are going to treat you right. And so with that, Jack put a little little harness around the, the, the cow's you know, neck there and went on down the road, heading towards the village. Well, it was a little bit of a walk. Like I said, they were way out in the country. And by and by, Jack came to a rise. And there was a tree up on the rise. And he saw this man standing underneath the tree. And Jack's leading the cow along. And you know, Jack you know, he learned his manners, and he looked at the, the, the man, and he tipped his hat and wished him a good day. And the man looked at him, Jack, Jack, he said. Well, Jack was startled. He said, yes, that's me. How do you know my name? And the man looked at Jack, and he looked him up and down, and he says, Jack, not only do I know you, but I know your mother, and I knew your father very well. Well, Jack was completely perplexed. His mother rarely, if ever, talked about his father, saying that he had gone off to sea and was lost in a shipwreck in a storm. And his mother was really brokenhearted about all of it, and again, never mentioned, rarely mentioned his father. So Jack says, well, how do you know my mother? And how do you know my father? And the man looked at Jack and says, well, I have a small but strange tale to tell you. Do you have a moment? And says, Jack says, I'm just leading the cow to the market. Certainly, I can, I have, a, I have, a, I have all the time in the world. Uh, the man looked at Jack and says, well, I knew, your, I knew your father back in the day. It is true. You know, he was a, a merchant and he had a fabulous ship and he would sail around the world and bring back all these fabulous things you know not only for you know the the, the, you know, the people that he worked for you know the merchant you know has has many many friends but he also brought back these fabulous gifts for your mother and you you were just a baby I don't think you could possibly remember him well your father was a big-hearted man he always made he made friends um, all over, and you know because of the fact that he made friends with so many people, there was always somebody who was you know out there to, to take advantage. Um, but your father never saw it. Again, he was a good-hearted man, and he always looked to find the best in people. Well, one day he met this man, extraordinarily tall. Some would call him a giant. And the, 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 your father, again, you know, brought this man, this giant, into, into his life, into the life of your family. 
Well, again, I remember I was saying that your father would, you know, he would sail the seas and he'd bring back all these treasures. He brought back things for you and your mother, and they were some pretty wonderful things. He had a, you know, uh, you know he had this harp that would play music when he had, when you asked it to sing, and he had a, a, a hen that laid golden eggs, you know, and, and, and because of the fact that, you know, he did so well as a merchant, he had bags of gold and jewels all, you know, there in his storeroom. Well, people talk, and this man, this giant of a man, heard about these things. But he pretended to be poor, and, and he came up with a story that, you know, that oh, probably just broke your father's heart to hear. And your father brought this man into your life, again, into your home. Again, you, you wouldn't know any of this. Certainly your mother would. Well, one day, your mother and you went in, into, into the village. you were doing, but when you and your mother went off, the giant found himself alone with your father and murdered your father and took the bags of gold and the bags of emeralds and pearls and took the harp that sang and took the hen that laid the golden eggs. And he went off, went off so far, so far away land is in the sky hard to get to he was he must have been i don't know bewitched if not bewitched he had magical powers that part of the story i can't tell you jack but i know that in order for you to reclaim your fortune to reclaim the treasures of your family you must use these magic beings and that was the first time jack saw beans in that man's hand. And Jack was flabbergasted. He says, well, I have nothing to give you. I, don't, I have nothing that I could possibly trade you for those beans so that I could reclaim my family's fortune. He says, well, I'm not asking for anything from you other than say your cow. I'll trade you the cow for the beans. That way you can go back home and you can tell your mother you had a great square deal with me. Plus, you don't have to worry about going all the way into the village. Jack was like, this is fabulous. I just can't wait to go home. Here's the cow. I'll take the beans. How, what do I do with the beans? Well, you wait for a full moon. And tonight, aren't you lucky? There's a full moon. And you plant them out in your yard. And that's going to be that. Throw a little water on them. Everything else will happen on its own. Well... Jack, being a young man, he was full of enthusiasm, and he, he was practically dancing on that dirt road. And he turned around and said, thank you, thank you, and he ran pretty much the entire way home. Well, he couldn't, couldn't get in that front door fast enough. And he saw his mother, you know, there in the kitchen, and says, mother, mother, I can't tell you what I have in exchange for our cow. And she looked at him and said, oh, Jack, I'm so pleased. Well, what did you get? Five pieces of gold? Ten pieces of gold? Can you imagine how long we can go on that? No, mother, better than that, I got three magic beans. And she looked at him, and she was in the middle of drying something, and it dropped out of her hands and shattered on the floor. She looked at him and said, son, you got three beans? Three magic beans for our cow? Don't you know that that was the last thing that we have of any value or worth? I want to put my hands around your neck, but to do so, that means I had to, to bury you and I don't have enough money for a coffin. I, oh, you were just a, a numbskull of a lad. Well, I says, but mother, mother, I met this man on the road and he gave me these three magic beans and he said if I bury the beans under the light of the moon tonight, I'll, uh, the, the beans will do something. I don't know what they're going to do, but I'll be able to go conquer you know, this giant who took our fortune away. Well, Jack's mother stopped. She looked at him. She looked at him hard in a strange, weird way that she'd never, ever looked at him before. And she grew pale, and she fell down. She passed out. Well, hours later, she finally woke up, and Jack had her there in his lap, and he, with a cold, he had a cold rag on her head. He says, Mother, Mother, what's the matter? What happened? He 
says, Jack, I haven't heard anything about that, and I've never told you anything about that. Not since that wicked day. Oh my, Jack. Well, I still don't know who you talk to, and I know nothing about these magic beans. Someday we'll have to talk about your father. And with that, she got up, and she walked off into her room, and she closed the door, and Jack could hear her sobbing in the back room. Well, Jack felt pretty broken hearted. He had no idea he hurt his mother, so. But he took those beans, and he went out into the, into the garden. And like I say, her mother had passed out for a while. The sun was down, the moon was rising. And just when the moon beams, coming down into the garden. He took a little spade and he dug a hole and put the magic beans in, sprinkled some water on top after, and put some dirt on, more water. And he didn't know what to say or do. He said, go back home and do it rather into his house, go to bed, been a full day. Moonbeams settled down on that little mound in the yard. And magic does happen in these tales. It certainly happened in Jack's life. About the beans grew a stock. And it wasn't just your average stock. But this stock grew bigger and wilder and taller. And it grew so fast that the light of the moon was blocked out and the night sky became very dark. And before you know it, the bean stock grew higher and higher and higher until it reached the clouds up in the sky. Well, the next morning, Jack woke up and he thought, gosh, am I waking up in the middle of the night? It's so dark in my room. I can't believe how dark it is. And he looked up the window and it's, there's this massive green thing. It looked like a tree in front, of his, in front of his window. And he got up and he walked out the room and he saw that the front door had gotten pushed in and the windows had gotten pushed in. So he went around and climbed out a window on the other side of the house. And he walked around the house, and sure enough, this, this massive beanstalk was in his yard. And he jumped up and down and says, Mother, Mother, look at, look at this, the beans grew. And his mother came out, and she saw that, and she was just amazed. She says, what are we going to do about that? She says, what are we going to do about that, said Jack. I'm going to climb to the top and see what's there. I'm going to go reclaim our fortune. And he did, and he climbed up that stock. And he climbed and climbed and climbed. And Well, let me tell you, if you have a fear of heights, I don't know if you'd ever want to climb up that bean stock, but he did. And he got to the top, and there was this grand land up at the top, rolling fields, massive animals, and massive everything, trees, and hills, everything. Was, he was dwarfed. But he was out to find out more about this giant that lived in this land. So he walked and walked till he came to this castle, this massive castle in the sky, and he walked up to the door and he knocked. And a woman opened the door. She looked at Jack and says, what do you want? You don't want to be around here. My husband comes around here, he's going to smell you, and he's going to want to eat you. And he says, well, I, 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 I'm lost, and I really don't know exactly who or what I'm looking for, but I, I, I was wondering if you could help me. I, even a glass of water or something to eat right now would be great. I started off well before breakfast. And as a matter of fact, I didn't even get any breakfast. Well, she says, well, she looked around and she was kind of nervous. She says, I don't know. This is not really a good idea. Okay, but I'll go ahead and let you win just this, just this once, just for a moment. Come on in. And so she led him into the kitchen and she was scooping out, you know, her, her husband's supper, apparently. And she set this big plate on the, on the table and she looked at the boy again. Mm. And she poured a little water into a, a thimble-sized cup. Massive for Jack. And he drank that down, and as soon as, while he, as soon as he was drinking, while he was drinking, he heard this fee fi fo fum I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he live or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Well, the panic that set in with, with the wife. Oh my God, he's here, I told you. What are we gonna do with you? I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put you in the oven. And she opened the oven door and put Jack inside and just left it cracked open a little bit. And with that, in shambled 
one of the biggest, scariest men that Jack had ever seen. And just as the man who gave him the beans had said, he wasn't a man, he was more than a man. He was a giant of a man. And he looked at his wife and said, wife, what are you serving me for supper? I smell boy in here. Oh, don't worry, husband. You it must have been. You must be smelling the bones of the boy you had last week. No, 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 no. We we have a brace of you know pigs and, and a couple of cows and a stew that I made for you. Please sit down and and, and make yourself at home. Well, you eat, eat, eat. And the, the giant sat down, tucked himself in. He had tankards of ale and loaves of bread and more and more of that stew till he was packed tight as a drum. And he called out to his wife, bring me my bags of money. I want to count my money. And with that, the, the wife brought out two big bags. One was filled with coins and the other one was filled with jewels. And the, the, the giant sat there in his chair, belching and yawning. Counting his stacks, making stacks, making piles of jewels until he fell asleep at the table, head down. Jack had been watching all this from the oven. He pushed the oven door down and he climbed out. And he looked at the table and he heard the giant snoring went. He climbed up on the onto the table and he put the, the coins back in the bag and he put all the jewels back in the bag and he threw them over his shoulders and he ran and he ran out the door and he ran back down the path to where the beanstalk was and he threw the bags down they landed in his yard and he climbed back down and called mother mother you wouldn't believe what i found and she came out and she saw these bags and he untied them and here one was gold and silver and the other one was emeralds and pearls and all this beauty she of course exclaimed my gosh jack what is this this is fabulous oh mother mother and, and he proceeded to tell her the tale of being up in the giant's castle well as these kind of things go you know the, the gold was good and the pearls and emeralds were good they were made even better because, well, they belonged to Jack and his mother. But Jack wasn't done yet. He heard that story from the man about other things. So one day, even though his mother told him, Jack, we have enough here to live very well for the rest of our lives. Please don't go. Don't put yourselves in, harm, in, in harm's way. We already know that this is, a, this is a dangerous, evil man. Mother, I'll be back. I'll be fine. And he climbed the stock once again. And once again, he got up to the land of the clouds and he made his way down the, you know, the path that was up there till he came to the giant's castle. And once again, he knocked on the door and opened the, 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 the giant's wife opened the door. And she looked down and, you, oh my goodness, you're back. I can't believe you have the nerve. Yo, last time I, I, I brought you in, I, I gave you water, I was about to feed you, and then all of a sudden my husband came home. Well, the row, the, 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 oh, the noise, the, the breakage, when he found out his bag of gold and his, his jewels were gone, he has no idea what happened to them. I don't know either, but it seemed kind of coincidental that you were gone and so were Anyway, uh, what do you want back here? I can't have you come back in. Oh, please, please, I'm so sorry to bother you. I, I, I just really could use some water, maybe a crust of bread. I, I've been on the go since breakfast, and I haven't even eaten breakfast. Well, she was a kind-hearted lady. She looked down at Jack, and of course, you know, she knew better, but no breakfast, no water. I gotta take care of him. He's just a young man. So she brought him into the kitchen, and she was pouring out a little thimble full of water, and you know, she was scooping out dinner for the husband again, and she put that on the table. And just as Jack was knocking back that water and just getting ready to bite into that loaf of bread and that little crust, he hears, fee fi fo fum Well, why, once again, she panics. Oh, my God, he's home again, and you're here. You know what's going to happen if he sees you? So she tucks him on the back side of the, back side of the sink. You know, behind a, I don't know, big bags of 
things that were in there. You know how things are in their sinks. And there Jack stood and he was peeking out from behind this big bag. And then comes the giant shambling along as before with a big club over his shoulder and, you know, four or five steers and another has it. She, he threw them at the wives and says, cook those up for my dinner. And why do I smell boy in here again? He says, oh dear, don't you remember when you went and you raided that one village? Oh, we must still have some something around here that reminds you of that magnificent feast you made of all those villagers. Well, you know, I never mind. You just cook up those, those steers and maybe I'll go ahead and forgive you and I'll cuff you upside the head. Uh, she took the steers and she prepared them and she roasted them over the fire. You know, and luckily for Jack, he wasn't in the oven this time because that's where the steers went. And the giant sat down, he put down his club and he poured himself a big flag and a veil. And, you know, and, and then he sat down and he ate his five steers and 15 bushels of potatoes and 20 bushels of carrots and, you know, a little bit of greens because, you know, it's good for you. And he called to his wife, 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 bring me my, my hen that lays the golden eggs. Well, she went into a cupboard and she brought out the hen and she sat on the table. The giant looked at the, the hen, lay, he said to the hen. And the hen dropped a golden egg. And he did it about four or five more times. Lay, so the pile of golden eggs got kind of high. But the giant, he had a busy day, and before you know it, he fell asleep at the table. Boom. Started snoring. <laughs> snoring to, you know, just, just rattled the timbers in the house. Well, Jack, he saw all this, and he climbed out from behind the bag, and he climbed up onto the table, and he saw, you know, I don't know what it was, a bag, a satchel, something on that table, and he put the hen in there, and he closed it up and he jumped off the table and he ran out the door and ran down the path till he came to the beanstalk and he went down, mother, mother, and she came out of the house and, and he dropped down this bag and, it, and she opened it up and inside was the hen that laid the golden eggs. Oh my goodness. Well, she wasn't going to pass out again, but it was the first time she had seen that in many, many a year. She just was beside herself with joy, tears flowing down her face. Jack, 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 and hugging her son for everything he was worth. Well, as these things go, you know, Jack, well, he heard about the, the jewels and the, the coins. And he heard about the hen that laid the golden eggs. He everything so far that that man up on that hill had told him to come to pass. He felt he wasn't done yet. But his mother, oh my goodness, says, Jack, we have more than enough. Please don't go, I beg you. We don't, leave him to his own devices. He's an evil man. But Jack wouldn't hear anything of it. Once again, he went up the beanstalk, climbed and climbed and climbed all the way up to the land of the clouds. And when he got to the land of the clouds, he walked that path and he went up to the garden. You know, and there was uh, the giant's wife out there for her husband's supper. And she turned around and walked back into the into the castle and he walked up to the kitchen door and knocked and she opened up the door and I think right away she knew this is not going to be a good thing because there he was again, this boy, and she looked at him, what are you doing back here? The, oh my goodness, the giant, the last time you came here, Yo, I thought you were just going to sip your water and go. Maybe you did. I have no idea. But my husband, when he woke up in the morning, his hen that laid the golden eggs was gone. You were gone. I don't think those two things go well together here. Oh, but, oh, please, miss, I had nothing to do with anything. I, I came and drank my water and I left. Mm. Uh, again, I'm so sorry to be bothering you. I'm so thirsty and I'm so hungry. and I'm really kind of tired. I was wondering if I could just rest here for a bit before I make my way on down the road. Well, again, she was a kind-hearted woman, but she she had really taken a lot of grief because Jack had been coming around. But she said, okay, this is the last time. And she brought him into the kitchen, gave him a little crust of bread, and gave him a, you know, a little thimble full of water again. He was biting into that loaf of 
loaf of bread, that crust of bread, and he had himself that little bit of water. And he came inside the kitchen and he sat right next to the table and he found himself a cup. It wasn't just a cup. I mean, this cup was as big as a couch. And it had been turned over in its side. And again, he was kind of tired. He'd been climbing that stock and he sat inside the cup and he was eating when all of a sudden he heard the fee fi fo vum And the wife, oh my God, he's back and you're still here. And she picked up that cup and she sat on the edge of the table. And into the cup fell Jack. Well, she put a little plate on top of that. And in came the giant. Wife, why do I smell boy in this house? Well, oh, 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 you know, we had that. There's a crow. It fell, you know, flew over the house and maybe dropped something in the chimney. I really don't know. Wife, this is the last time I haven't had boy in forever. I'm so hungry. What do you have for dinner for me? Oh, husband, don't you worry. I, I have... You know, 15 oxen roasting uh, out there in the back, and I've harvested all these vegetables. Just sit down at the table, relax. You know, we'll take care of you. And so he poured himself a big flag in a veil, and before you know it, he had a mound of oxen and equally big mounds of vegetables sitting on his plate. And he called to his wife after he'd wiped up the last of the, the meal. He says, wife, bring me out my bring me out my harp that sings. Well, Jack was trapped in that cup. He heard all this going on. He had no idea what he was gonna do about that. When all of a sudden the giant lifted the plate off the cup and put it down on the table. Luckily for Jack, he didn't look inside the cup, discover him there at the bottom. But the giant took the plate, set it down in front of him, and his wife brought out the harp that sang. He looked at the harp and said, play, and the harp began to sing. This most beautiful music. Well, the giant by and by took a big meal and the flag and the veil fell asleep. <sighs> Held right on the table. He wasn't deep in sleep. He wasn't snoring this time. Jack, he wasn't witless, but he certainly must have been brave because he peeked up over the top of the, rim, the, the, the rim of that cup and he saw the giant sleeping. So old, old Jack decided to go ahead and jump over the rim of that cup and he landed on the table and it, the, the cup fell over and hit the floor and it clattered and broke. Well, that woke up the giant just as Jack grabbed the harp. And Jack jumped down off the table and the giant woke up and said, Oh, you're the one who's been stealing my things. And he ran after Jack. And the Jack, you know, and he was tearing at stuff and throwing things at Jack. But Jack, being young and limber and nimble, ran up and down and over and around until he got to the beanstalk. And he started his climb down. Well, just about the time he was halfway down, the giant came down that beanstalk too, and he was bigger and just a little bit faster. But Jack called out to his mother, 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 bring the axe! And Jack came all the way down the beanstalk, and he, pow, he put the, 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 the harp off to the side, and he took the axe, and his mother, and he cut that beanstalk till it snapped in half. And, giant fell to the ground along with the beanstalk and left a massive hole in the earth that became a lake and, the Jack, and, and Jack and his mother well they were wealthy they were wealthier than their wildest dreams but it wasn't wealth you see it was the legacy of Jack's father that meant more to him than almost anything else he could have possibly gained. He and his mother were comfortable for the rest of their lives. As for the giant, well, again, he just rests in the bottom of that lake now. Snip, snap, snout, his tail.